seminar of today. Um, we're very lucky to have Mark along with us. Mark Abrahams is what we call a TV vet. He's a TV celebrity, he appears on TV a lot, but he's also very much the Kennel Club vet. We talk, he talks for the Kennel Club on a lot of issues. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something very negative, unfortunately. We're all here to, today to talk to celebrate dogs and to look at dogs and to look at the right way to buy a puppy but there is a darker side of uh, puppies and that is puppy farming. Now we've probably all heard what heard about puppy farm and we know it's something that we really don't want to encourage, we want to try and stand out. But Mark's going to tell you all about what puppy farming is and perhaps give you some indicators of what you can do to help us stamp it out. So over to you Mark. Thanks Bill and thanks for those of you who have come. Okay, so, let's see if this works. Okay, so first of all I'd like to sponsor, uh, thank the sponsor of this particular lecture, who are uh, gwfnutrition.com, who are found in stand 240, just over there somewhere, and they make joint supplements for dogs and horses, so thank you to them. Okay, so, who here knows what puppy farming is, or thinks they know? And who here doesn't know? Okay, well, well, we'll skim through it anyway. So puppy farming is the large-scale commercial dog breeding where profit is given priority over the well-being of dogs. Um, so the opposite of responsible breeders uh, who put the utmost importance on producing the healthiest puppies possible, um, breeding at puppy farms is performed without consideration of genetic quality or any consideration to the happiness and well-being of the dog. And that's not just the puppy, it's the, it's the bitch. And the, and the male dog as well. This results, and it can only result in generations and generations, thousands and thousands of dogs with unchecked hereditary defects, amongst other problems which we'll get to. Puppy farm pups are typically sold to pet shops, uh, or online, or through dealers, um, and usually sold as young as five to six weeks. The reason for this is because, and this is obviously a terrible thing because they're taken from the mother so young, is because the older they get, the less cute they become, and the less sellable they are. And also, a lot of puppies are sold, especially white, little fluffy ones, are sold as purebred Westies or purebred Maltese, when really they're crosses, and the older they get, the more likely they are to look like the actual crosses rather than purebred. So there's an urgency to sell these pups, so the quicker you sell them, the younger they are, the more likely they are to sell. Any puppy farm pup which produces documents is usually falsified. Um, so why is it a problem? Everyone talks about it, not enough people talk about it, but we'll come to that. It's a problem because not only the bitches and the stud dogs become ill, but the puppies become ill themselves, and not just medically, but behaviourally as well. So you get illness, disease, fearful behaviour, lack of socialisation with humans and other animals, uh, which are very common problems that are shown by puppy farm dogs. Um, because they, puppy farmers fail to apply proper um, husbandry practices, they don't remove sick dogs from breeding pools, they just keep them, keep them breeding, keep them breeding, so everything just gets worse, more diseased, and a lot harder to treat or even keep alive. So some of the problems encountered, we won't go through them all, but these are very common problems that you would get if you bought a puppy farmed pup. Um, from a pet shop or online or any other method, petrol service station, bloke in a pub, etc. Not a responsible breeder, in other words. So epilepsy, heart disease, kidney, these are all lethal conditions um, that are preventable by basically not being bred in this way. Eye problems as well, really common uh, respiratory disorders. So these are, con uh, these are only congenital and hereditary problems also have other problems that the puppies are actually picked up with or bought with which are very very common as well so on top of the congenital heart disease the eye problems and all the rest of it you've got parvo, giardia, distemper, respiratory infections, kennel cough all the way down, mange fleas, ticks because none of the, these dogs are actually treated uh, and that's puppies and adults with anything that resembles preventative disease control they're not seen by vets, they're not fed properly so before you've even got your pet, your brand new family pet, which is going to be the, with you hopefully for 15 to 20 years, it's, got, it's loaded with things that it's probably going to kill it. This is why it's a problem. 
So why do they get all these problems? Well, it's definitely because of the way that the adults are treated on puppy farms. There's a few pictures here. So puppy farms are usually barns in the middle of nowhere who are overcrowded, they're unsanitary, they have no veterinary care, proper food, no water or very little water and what there is is usually contaminated and they're definitely not socialised which is why you get a lot of these puppies that come into people's houses and they're absolutely terrified of everything and, and, and because of our convenience culture society now where everyone wants a quick fix people haven't got the time or the money or the, or the patients to actually go to a dog trainer and get it sorted properly so these dogs are probably going to be dumped in a rescue centre or put to sleep so the, the cycle is horrific. Uh, puppy farm dogs don't get to experience treats, toys, exercise or basic grooming. They very rarely see outside. The ones outside very rarely see inside. Um, some dogs I've actually met before haven't ever run. They can barely turn around. To minimise waste cleanup, dogs are often kept in cages with wire flooring that injures their paws and legs and it's not unusual for cages to be stacked up in columns to save space and make even more money. Um, so how often are they bred? And this is a, another reason why it's a, an incredible cruel subject is because a bitch will typically come on season twice a year and the bitch is actually bred twice a year. So there's no recovery between litters. They're bred on every opportunity because if you lose a heat, you lose potentially about 10,000 pounds. After a few years, they're physically depleted to the point they no longer can reproduce, so the breeding females are usually put to sleep, sometimes even worse. If they're taken to a vet and it's done properly, it's a bonus. I would imagine it's probably not the usual way. Um, so when, you know, the classic thing when people come to me as a vet and they say, I say, and it's obvious when a puppy farm pup comes in, and bless them, they want to know. And I say, where's the pup from? And they say, oh, we rescued it from a pet shop. And I mean, um, Karen here, she's a fantastic behaviorist. I'm sure she's heard this a million times as well. People genuinely think they're doing the right thing by rescuing from a pet shop. And what that does, it provides a space for the next puppy. And what they're not rescuing is the breeding bitch and the stud dog who is still chained up uh, 100 miles away or more in the middle of nowhere. So, why does it happen? One word, really, money. It's the easiest thing, one of the easiest ways of making money in the world must be to breed dogs. It's quick. A litter only takes 63 days, that's two months. Puppies at the moment, when they're sold, uh, for example, uh, online, are at least 500 pounds. So an average litter must be about seven to 13 pups. So, you know, you're looking at five to 10,000 pounds every two months, potentially without giving any veterinary care, feeding them properly. I mean, it's, it's crazy, really. So it's, it's pure greed that drives these puppy farms. It's easy money and it's quick money. Where does it happen? It happens all over the place. In the States, Missouri is the capital of puppy, puppy farming or puppy mills as it's known over there. Um, in this country, in the UK, the main places are South West Wales, so Carmarthenshire, classically, the counties around there and also in Ireland, but it's pretty much throughout the UK. What drives it? Who's responsible? Why does it happen? It's got to be celebrity culture is responsible. As soon as Paris Hilton got her teacup to our Tinkerbell, and I know this for a fact, when I was over in LA a few years ago, there were bootfuls and bootfuls of chihuahuas being shipped across the border from Mexico into California just to meet the demand. And I was speaking to vets over there and they were saying every bootful had sometimes up to 500 chihuahua pups in the boot of a car. Most of them had died on the way, but just to serve this need. So the demand is something that needs to be met um, you know, by these puppy farmers. And they're well aware of it. As soon as David Beckham gets given a bulldog, the, the bulldogs are brought in and they're, and they're bred and they're sold online. So again, business-wise, makes complete sense. It's a, it's a no-brainer, but the dogs are suffering. So who's responsible, which is a question that's asked of me quite a lot. On paper, the RSPCA should be responsible. In reality, they don't really do anything. On paper, also, the local authorities are responsible, but on paper, they don't really do anything either. 
Um, the reason they don't do anything is because a lot of these premises, and you'd think by the description, are illegal, but actually a lot of them are licensed breeders. There are a lot of unlicensed, but there are, most of them are licensed, which means the council are giving licenses to people to breed dogs in this way. And the reason they do that is either backhanders, a little bit of organised crime thrown in, maybe they're all family related and it's not meant to be a nasty thing, but in the middle of Wales, it's very close communities, so they all back each other up. But at the end of the day, it's happening. So I think, personally, the responsibility has shifted for why it happens from the RSPCA and the local authorities who prove that they are powerless uh, to the public. And it's now time for the public to be responsible and actually become more aware and pass on the word about how to get a dog, and we'll come to that in a sec. And for, for many years, people have said, oh, it's been going on for years, but what can I do about it? And there are things you can do, but we'll come to that in a sec. Another thing people ask is, a lot of anti kennel club people especially, is why do we need pedigree dogs? Um, pedigree dogs have a history of being working dogs and, and, and being toy dogs, and every pedigree dog is bred for a certain reason. So why do we need them anymore? Why do we have mongrels? Very interesting question, but it's never going to shift. There's always going to be a demand for pedigree dogs. People love them. So instead of rubbishing, oh, instead of rubbishing um, the kennel club, and saying that it's, it's such a bad thing to have pedigrees, there are places to be supported because you want to keep it central. As soon as you say it's bad, people start doing things like they're doing uh, after the documentary a few years ago, breeding Labradoodles, Cockapoos, uh, and the whole breeding thing goes haywire. Because Cockapoos and Labradoodles are popular, obviously they're being brought together, they're not health tested, they all also have medical problems and temperament problems. So, We've got to support pedigree dogs. There will always be a demand for them, so let's make sure they get bred properly. Um, okay, so one way to stop, one way for the public to be responsible is to stop the demand. And if the demand stops, the puppy farming has to stop. It's simple. So one of my missions it is turning out in life now is to educate the public and everyone I come in, into contact with about where to get a dog from. Stopping the demand means not buying from pet shops and Harrods is probably the most pet famous pet shop in the world where puppies today will be being sold for £3,000 each. That's £3,000 a puppy, say a litter of 10 puppies, £30,000. That's right, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> your brain's a bit fried. Um, so you've got a lot of money potentially being made by rich people who are out having a glass of champagne, they walk past a cute puppy, there's no thought, there's no research, they're not seeing the mum. Um, and that's why they, they do so well, these puppy farmers. But there's, there's pet shops in most um, towns in the country, and that's another thing I'm working on at the moment, is changing the law to stop pet shops being allowed to sell puppies or kittens. But puppy is the, is the biggest demand. The other thing is, uh, the, the internet, obviously, now, it's so easy for people to get a dog. There used to be sites, which I won't name, because any publicity apparently is good publicity, but you could give £500, and it would be free delivery the next day, and you'd have a Westie or a Maltese Terrier that doesn't really look like what it looks like on the internet. Okay, so we'll come on to scams in a sec, but it's really, I can't stress enough, it's educating the public and creating awareness. So buying a puppy from the internet is as risky, if not riskier, than buying one from a pet shop. Any responsible breeder in their right mind, and you can ask any of that lot down on Discover Dogs area, would never ever give their puppy away unless they completely trusted the person it was going to. They're part of their family, um, and also you know, any puppy that goes away that has problems, the breeder will say, if there's any problems, until the, it's the last week of life, I'll always take it back. The reverse is true with puppy farms and, and uh, dealers. They're trying to shift as many units as possible, and they usually get you to sign something to say, under no conditions will you get, will we take this dog back? You're pretty much stuffed with it, and that's with the vet's bills as well. Um, so the, the the message really is the simple one: is instead of going to a pet shop, instead of going to uh, the the internet or buying a dodgy puppy, go to a kennel club accredited breeder who provide the best conditions, that a lot of them are health tested, this is the real gold standard, or go to a rescue. Um, I'm a very proud patron of the Oldies Club, which is the only picture I could find with a dog wearing a little jacket saying Oldies Club, who rehome older unwanted dogs, so you know what size they are, 
the house trains, maybe the owners died, or maybe they've been taken into temporary accommodation so they can't have a dog. These are perfectly good dogs. So either go gold standard accredited breeder, and there's more uh, information about that at the accredited breeder stand, or go rescue, and I'm talking Dogs Trust, I'm talking Oldies Club, talking the Mayhew, uh, Wood Green, there's phenomenal shelters all over the country, even little ones. Go to them, uh, a lot of them have got pedigree pups, um, which is interesting. There's also um, breed rescue, so if you're dead set on a certain breed, you know, if you, if you desperately want a Bichon, or you desperately want a, a Cavi, you know, contact the Kennel Club, there's a breed rescue directory, get a fully grown one, give, give them a chance. Um, especially if you haven't got the lifestyle that means you can have a puppy. Um, okay, so if you're dead set on getting a pedigree puppy, you're obviously in the right place with Discover Dogs. Do your research, lifestyle, any allergies in the family. Obviously the Obamas were the best example of this when they got their Portuguese water dog because the Obama's daughter was uh, allergic. Um, check your local rescue shelters. Um, so, you know, not only will you be saving a life, but you'll ensure your money is not going to support a puppy farm. Uh, and apparently an estimated 25% of dogs in rescue are actually pedigrees as well. So that's a good place to start. And as I say, breed rescue is another place to go if your heart is set on a proper uh, breeder. On my personal website and on a few other websites I've, I've helped out, I've done a sort of a checklist for choosing a pedigree pup. Um, basically, it just takes you through, the, it's like a checklist, um, do your research. The, the, the most important one is to see the pup with the mum, always, always, gold standard, and you'll be scammed out of this, um, but that is the one. A good breeder, they'll invite you into their home, they won't force anything onto you, and you'll see the mum interacting with the, with the pup, which is actually more important than just the mum and the pup, because a lot of people bring in another dog, and they'll just put the pups with them. So it's the interaction is important. Not necessarily the dad, because a lot of puppy farms will have the dad and the mum on site, so, but the mum is the golden one. Be, be aware of multi-breed dealers. Most, most puppy uh, pedigree breeders will have one breed and one breed only. At a push, they'll have two. So in the Friday ad, there'll be dog's bread, there'll be shih tzus, cockapoos, labradoodles. That'll be a dealer for a puppy farmer. So that's the checklist, so I'll give you my website afterwards and you can look that up, but it's be prepared to be asked as many questions as you'll ask the breeder, and most breeders will grill you before they give one of their precious pups away. And listen to advice and ask as many people here as possible about their particular breed. I think for me the acid test for a, for a breeder or a dealer is this one, and say, you basically say, if there's a problem, can I bring it back? And in that split second, you'll know if it's a puppy farmer or not, or a dealer, because the ones that will say, absolutely no way, or they'll shudder, are the dealers, the good breeders will say, yeah, of course, no problem. What you can do to raise awareness, um, some of you will know I did an event this year called Pup Aid 2010, which is in Brighton, which is a music festival, um, and dog show. It was in aid of the local Dogs Trust, and um, it was celebrities judging dogs who all gave up their time for free and a whole music festival at the same time. That's kind of the extreme of what you can do, but I'm quite obsessed by this now, so I want to really push it and use my media profile to help dogs, which is kind of working. Um, so what I would suggest is next, next year's Puppy Farm Awareness Day is the 18th of September. Join up with your local vet, your local dog trainer, radio station, newspaper, and put an event on that just raises awareness. This event was launched, I was very lucky, um, by um, a guitar that was given to me by Gibson Guitars, who said, if you could find a big enough celebrity to sign it, we'll give you a guitar. So it started off by Liam Gallagher signing it uh, from Oasis, then we got Mick Jones from The Clash, David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. It's, it snowballed. The last signature, was Brian May a couple of weeks ago. And these are all rock legends that are getting behind this campaign. And every time this happens, it makes obviously press, media. When Liam signed it, it was in the front, uh, the middle pages of the Sun Bizarre column. So six million people potentially saw tips on how to buy a puppy, tips on how to get a dog. It also made the Star, the Express, Hello, Q Magazine, and all online. So 
Sadly, the way to educate the public is via celebrity, but it is happening, and I'm very proud to be pushing that through. This guitar is being signed by Jimmy Page on Tuesday from Led Zeppelin, and it goes under the hammer at Bonhams on the 15th of December, and all the money is going to Kennel Club Charitable Trust, the Oldies Club, and the local Dogs Trust showroom. So hopefully it's 20 grand's worth of guitar that's going to go to dogs, and raising awareness at the same time. So what people can do is tell everyone that you know, whether it's someone next to you in a bus stop, your best friends, your partner, online. Some people now have blogs, Facebook, Twitter. Who's got Twitter here, by the way? Who's on Twitter? It's a really powerful tool. If you're going to tweet out, um, use the hashtag Band Puppy Farming, and you'll probably get retweeted, probably by me or by Karen or uh, one of the Kennel Club guys. The more it's talked about, even it appearing in a Twitter feed for two seconds, it's raising awareness. Um, if someone you know is planning on buying a puppy, obviously direct them to the Kennel Club Accredited Breeders uh, website, get them to ring the Kennel Club for advice. It's a fantastic resource of advice. It's the best, I think, on the planet. Um, so get them involved. They're, they're lovely people and they're more than happy to talk and direct you to a responsible breeder. Um, okay, look, one last thing about puppy scams and cons, which are really common. So a lot of people now are learning that in our culture that uh, actually it's not the right thing to get from a pet shop. So they go online and it's very common, as any high street calendar salesman will tell you, for a hook, which is the puppy's face, and a little cute fluffy puppy's face staring at you from your computer screen, especially you know, if, you, if you desperately want a dog, or you're buying a present for people, that happens a lot. People buy puppies as presents, and Christmas coming up is a terrible time. In fact, someone tweeted out a few weeks ago, I think it was about two weeks ago, oh, I feel sorry for all the Christmas puppies that are being born in puppy farms today. And it was really sad, because it's absolutely true. So you get these endearing pictures, you get phony promises. Uh, the classic scam is called the bait and switch, which is cute and cuddly, happy, healthy puppies, which are usually stock photos taken from a clip art file or stolen from another website. Um, and then, you know, the, the dog is actually deli delivered the next day, usually for free, 500 pounds, and it's got all those diseases that we saw. And then what happens is basically the dog goes to the vet, the dog goes down with parvovirus, vomiting, diarrhea, its guts basically rot, goes on a drip, you're looking at at least two to three thousand pounds. If it doesn't die, uh, probably four thousand pounds to keep it alive until it does. So. You've got you know, a, a puppy that's sick. It's not like the one in the photo. You're stuck with it. Um, and obviously these scammers aren't feeling any guilt and they're rubbing their hands because people keep buying them. And as soon as people buy them, it makes a space for another one. Um, another one is free to a good home. Internet scammers don't just, just use cute photos. They'll say, uh, they'll say verbal deceit. So they'll say victims are offered a puppy free of charge and asked only to pay the shipping fee. Just like an episode of Watchdog now, yeah, literally. Um, so usually about you know, 500 or 1,000 pounds. So there's no dog involved, obviously, but people part with their money and these, you know, these people just get richer. So puppies are very emotive. The other one is um, a, a scam that preys on animal lovers who want to help dogs in need. So the puppy farm um, sets up as a rescue group or a sanctuary. And then, of course, the adoption fee they ask for is 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds. So the people think, you know, they're doing a great thing, they're giving money, but they're actually just buying a puppy farm pup. Breed rescue groups would charge just a, a minimal donation, if anything. They just want to find a lovely home. Um, I've got a highlight, if you want to come up, Lindsay. Three dogs that are very close to my heart, and this is a fantastic charity I'm very proud to be a supporter of, which is called Be Puppy Farm Aware. These are three X breeding, sorry, two X breeding bitches, chocolate labs, obviously, who've been rescued from whales. They've been obviously bred uh, as much as they can, and now they're living a happy life where they can interact with people, come to fantastic shows like this, and be tremendous pets. But once upon a time, these dogs, I mean, for me, they're the star of the whole building, stars of the whole building. These dogs were kept in crates, not watered, not fed properly, not treated for fleas or, or ticks or, or vaccinated, and now they're enjoying a massive life. These are the advert of the dogs that are still there and they desperately need all of our help so 
I'd like to thank Lindsay for coming along with these lovely dogs. Lindsay will be around after this demonstration, but also on my stand, which is number 32 near the entrance. But really, talk to as many people, spread the word, organise events, direct people to the Kennel Club. Bill's here, he's a lovely man um, who's, who runs the accredited breeders. And together, you know, and it's got to start somewhere, but from small groups, it's like the pyramid effect. Tell as many people as possible, get them involved. Uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm constantly tweeting out things about puppy farms and links to other sites. The more awareness is created, the quicker the problem gets solved and the better it is for all of the dogs in the UK. Thank you.